This is fight 263 against uh, Pet Champu down on Phuket, and this is Patong Stadium. This is my second fight at Patong ever. <laughs> uh, I've just recently started fighting in the south, and uh, I really like this stadium actually. It's uh, kind of like a composite of some other stadium places where I fought and it's the good parts of all these different places and I actually I really like the energy and the layout and the feel. Um, when I fight down there I've had Crew Pot in my corner. Crew Pot is pretty well known by most people um, as having been the head trainer at Sinbi gym uh, but he has since moved and he's now the head trainer slash everything <laughs> at Phuket King Muay Thai um, and that's where I met him. Here's my opponent. Pet Champu coming in. Um, and I trained with him for my patrons for the Muay Thai library. He has this incredible Muay Cao style. Uh, and so he started helping me get fights down on Phuket and he's been cornering for me. Um, I love having him in my corner. He has this very cool energy um, that's at once very like steady, like what he's asking you to do is very like clear and makes sense. But then he also has this weird like kind of um, static energy behind it that makes you really, really want to do what he's saying to do. You're like, okay, there's like a slight urgency to what he's saying to me, which um, I really enjoy. You come out on this catwalk uh, from behind this kind of like dressing area in the back. So you're kind of like separate from the um, stadium until you come in, which is different from a lot of the other stadia that I've fought at. Um, this is Crew Pot doing the Moncon for me. Um, I don't know much about the opponents that I've been facing down on Phuket. It's just a different pool of women than who I've been fighting up in the north or like opposite ends of the country. Um, so I don't know what to expect when I go down there. Not only do I not really know my opponents, but I don't really know um, the referees and judges of Stadia, like whether they let the clinch go, how they like to score, things like this. Um, but it's exciting to, to get into a different of that as well. Um, Paul Banachuk, who uh, some of you maybe know as Muay Thai athlete or Muay Thai technician, I think he just changed his name. Um, he was at the fight. Uh, he's been training with Crew Pot, and he said that he had seen my opponent Pet Champu fight on another fight card down in the south, um, and that she had been listed as some kind of champion from Bangkok. Um, I'm gonna have to ask her what her accomplishments and things like this are. We're friends on Facebook now, um, but she is definitely experienced. She has a lot of kicking femur skill, um, the steadiness with which she has between movements and kind of her uh, energy. You can tell she's very experienced. She's a really good fighter actually. And I was a little bit stoked because um, I fight people heavier than me all the time, but they're also usually taller than me. She's heavier than me, but uh, she's not taller than me. And the number of times I've fought someone who I had even like an inch on, out of 263 fights, it's like three times <laughs> or something. And I only very recently even got um, a sparring partner who is shorter than me in my gym. And just feeling that much of a reach advantage, like it, you just see things differently. Um, it really let me know that when I'm fighting someone who's taller than me, I need to give myself a little bit more slack uh, in the things that I'm not able to do against them because even that one inch um, that I have on my sparring partner back home, I can just feel things and see things completely differently. Um, so even though there's uh, still a weight difference between me and Pet Champu, um, I had the slight reach advantage, which is very new for me and it's very cool. I didn't really get to see her Ram Moy because I'm doing mine, so often I see my opponent's Ram Moy for the first time when I'm doing the voiceover and I get a little bit uh, like enamored of it. I'm always really paying attention to that. Um, but you can usually tell about your opponent how experienced they are by their Ram Moy. Not necessarily how elaborate it is, but how comfortable they are doing it. This isn't a fail-safe thing to look at because there are very experienced fighters who don't do an elaborate, long, or very enthusiastic Ramoy. <laughs> there are very experienced fighters who kind of are lazy and don't do the Ramoy at all, um, or just like a very small version of it. Uh, but you can tell uh, by hers, and it matches up with her uh, experience and poise in the ring as well.
It's really pretty. I learned my Ramoy from my first teacher, Master K. He's a Thai man teaching people out of his basement in New Jersey. So my Ramoy means actually a great deal to me because it came from Master K. And over the years, I've kind of added small things to it from myself that I kind of wanted to put into the influence of what I'm thinking about as I'm going into my fights. Um, but it, it means a lot to me to be carrying Master K with me into the ring 263 times. <laughs> That's a lot of times. I thought I'd have like 10 fights when I was like really reaching when I first started thinking about fighting. I'm like, I think 10 would be good. <laughs> There's a um, big screen over here off to the side of the um, ring that I could actually see a little bit of her Ramoy while still facing this way. You have to kind of make a choice about whether you're going to watch your opponent's Ramoy or whether you're going to like play it cool, like none of this matters, I'm just waiting for you. And I've kind of gone both ways. Sometimes I'll um, look off this way for quite a while and then if they really have a long Ramoy, I'll end up turning around late. Um, when you do that, like when you turn and face your opponent, if they have the like shooting of the arrows or some kind of like approaching your corner, um, you kind of have to interact with it. And I'm turning around to watch her because it's... Um, such an elaborate Ramoy. It's really beautiful though. People ask me about the Ramoy a lot, um, about what the movements are. I'd, everything represents something. This is really beautiful and I haven't seen a lot of people do this ever. A lot of the movements are taken from the Thai creation story that comes from uh, Hindu creation stories. It's called the Ramayana. So like Garuda um, is the, the birds flapping and then sometimes you'll see like Vishnu uh, arrows, Indra, things like this. So um, I can't tell you what each thing is, but everything is a reference to something. Um, a lot of times the like beautification of, of someone in the river um, comes from that story as well. I always try to crack my back on the top rope and I'm such a short fighter that I usually have to like jump up on the bottom rope in order to even get my back over the top rope to do that. It doesn't always look very slick when I'm trying to do it. I didn't really know what to expect from Pet Champu. I'd heard she was a kicker um, from other women who fight down on Phuket and have faced her. Um, so I knew that I wanted to uh, stay close. I've been trying to go left for years, but I've been really focusing on it because even against orthodox or southpaw fighters, it helps cut off the ring rather than just kind of chasing after them. And I'm the forward fighter, so I often end up looking like I'm chasing. I'm happy with the way that I was checking that kick, though. I'm not thinking about it. If I think too much about blocking, they don't come up, but it's just kind of coming up naturally. And I ended up checking without even thinking about it in a, in a really nice way. But you can see the way that she understands spacing. She's keeping me basically at pad work range. Like she's keeping me right on the end of her kicks because she just wants to be kicking all the time. And then my job, I'm trying to circle left in order to cut off her power kick and kind of like crowd her and corral her around the ring a little bit. She's really good at backing up and then kicking. So I'm going to be taking kicks on my way in and I just have to be unbothered by that. I need to be a little bit closer, and here I'm starting to drift right, which I do, which is one of the reasons I need to go left there. I gallop to the left to kind of cut her off, and that worked. She just landed an open side kick on me twice, so she's scoring. I'm not scoring yet, but it's round one, so that's okay. As a Muay Cow fighter, you want the later rounds. Earlier rounds aren't as important, but even while she's scoring in this round one, and so these points don't matter that much because it's not a scoring round, She's setting the tone for how she wants the judges to see this story playing out in the long run. Oh, that was a nice right knee on my part to an open side. She had switched stance because of being caught, and I got that right right up into her ribs. That was really good. Doing a little bit of leg kicks here. I've been working on keeping my guard up. Um, higher instead of letting my arms kind of like flop. They're doing a little bit of both <laughs> in that round, actually. But you don't decide to do something and just have it magically appear. It's all it's all a game of adjustment and process. So Krupat, this is the second time he's cornered for me, and he actually is telling me the same thing that he told me the first time I fought a different opponent. 
which is that he wants me to jab and teep on my way in. Like, don't just kind of walk after. He's saying that I need to keep my right arm up in guard because she's landing to my open side. So she is going to score even if she hits my arm, but by having my guard up, it's going to be not, you know, hitting my neck or hitting my chest or something that's like a really big score. But on top of that, if I'm guarding with this and I get that kick, I can come back with something immediately, like I can answer to it. If you punch off of a kick, the kick is a higher score than the punch. Um, all strikes are not equal in Muay Thai scoring in Thailand. But if I'm unbothered by the kick, like I don't bounce off of it, I don't lose balance, I don't look disturbed by the kick, and I come back with my own strike, it takes a little something off of her kick. It still scores, but it like kind of like aesthetically takes a little off. And if I can land something off of it and follow, I can, through two smaller points, make up for the big point of, you know, like a, a big power side kick to my body. Kevin is telling me I need to clinch right away. Um, I sometimes will kind of like play my opponent's game for the first couple of rounds because they don't score. And I end up just chasing them around. He's like, you need to clinch right away because you need to start establishing your narrative in this fight uh, instead of just following the opponent. So I'm starting out <laughs> with some kicks, which is interesting. But here we go. I have this like stepping in left hook that I love to do. I think I think of it as a jab, but I end up hooking instead. I am blocking like gangbusters though. That's really cool because I wasn't thinking about it. She's snuffing out my lock right there, which is good for her style of fighting. Um, it means that she's controlling me from the outside, and then once I get in, I have to score. If she can negate me, she's basically scoring and scoring, and then when we get to the distance where I can score, she's like, none for you, thanks. <laughs> which is the same game I need to play with my blocks, which is at her range. None of that's scoring, and then once I come inside, I grab her and I score with my knees. Um, so really, we're just battling over distance right now. Chop call is what uh, is what Krupa is yelling at me. Um, he wants me to grab her neck and kind of wrench her so that I can land more um, dominant knees, more more aesthetic knees that you can see from a distance. That was a beautiful one, two, and then open side kick from her, all of which landed. It's like one, two, three, it all went in. So she lands stuff like that that it doesn't hurt, but it counts. And then once we get to my range, she's snuffing me out. So, so far in telling the story of this fight, it's a Sylvie can't quite catch her, and I'm just trying to not be affected by the points that she's scoring at her range. So we're both telling different stories in a non-scoring round in order to affect what the overall narrative of the fight is going to be for the judges in the scoring rounds. Here I'm taking a little bit more distance to get my knees going, which is good but I'm still so close to her that my knees are coming to the outside, and Krupat really wants them to be down the middle. It was a nice body shot from me. I've been trying to get body shots in my fights for a really, really long time, and I think with my guard up, they're starting to come out better. I have a little bit of swagger coming out of that round. I, I think I took the very end of it, but in terms of like the whole round, um, we're both just battling over who's going to be uh, telling the dominant story in this fight in the last non-scoring round. Um, going into round three is really when you want to like set your tone. He's telling me that when I kind of get to the side of her and I'm I'm pushing her, I need to be um, scoring with my knee into the open open side that I've created by pushing on her. I'm basically too close uh, in my clinch, and Krupat is warning me about that. These guys are from his gym who are helping in the corner. I don't know them, um, but I think they're fighters from his gym. And this guy who is in the ring with him kept asking me if my shins hurt because I was blocking so many of her kicks. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't feel my shins anymore, sir. <laughs> like, ever. <laughs> it's fine. He wants me to create distance and land a straight knee. In Thai, they call it siap. Siap is to like stab so, or skewer. Um, so you want, you can land those side knees that I'm landing at a close range, but you have to create distance and then land like a straight knee into the guts. One you can knock someone out that way, end of fight, you win. But two, those are the high, high, high scoring points, especially for a Muay Cow fighter. She, as a kicker, is trying to land kicks to the middle of my body. That's where the target is. In the West, we like to headhunt. 
in Thailand, you want everything landing on the body. So her kicks that's, that land on my middle are really high scoring. So my knees that land in the middle need to be really high scoring to her. And I'm kind of choosing um, smaller points because I'm staying too close. So here I'm keeping my guard up, like he said. And so I'm kind of doing like a parry with my other arm across. That was an open side kick that landed. Uh, she got a point there. There I got a little bit of what he was asking for. My leg came down and I landed into her open side and left it there for a second. But she landed a kick on top of my left hook. So out of the two of us, she got the higher score in a more or less timing-wise equal exchange. She's like scooting herself into the corner that's forcing me to like snuff my own range. She's like making me do the work for her to like ruin my knees. But I'm coming after her. And because I'm staying closer, and when I come in and I grab her, I'm landing these knees, it's changing the narrative. It's establishing my narrative, which is when I catch you, I score. And when you're running away from me, you're fleeing. Whereas she wants the story to be, when you catch me, I snuff you. And when I stay away from you, I'm not running away. I'm like reeling you in and you can't catch me. I'm tiring her out by staying, going to the left a little bit. So I'm like cutting her off and corralling her. It changes the way your opponent breathes. So I can make her look desperate rather than controlling um, by the distance that I'm keeping. That's why distance in Muay Thai is really important, especially when you have different styles like this. You have uh, a femur kicker. This is a, a punch combination. It's not a combination. I bat down the front arm and punch over it. I think of all my punching strikes and fights, that's the one I land most often. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but I really like it. It comes pretty naturally. There was like a body punch left hook, which I throw on Krunu all the time, but I think I've wanted to throw in fights and never have. There's an elbow that came across that I was really proud of, but because we're in the ropes, when I yanked her to start pulling her back, I fell and we kind of like collapsed together. This is one of the reasons Kevin is always yelling at me, pull her off the ropes, is that if I had yanked her in open space, I'd be controlling where she is, but against the ropes, we kind of fell together. Round three. Okay, so that's the first scoring round, and we were both battling over whose narrative was going to be uh, carried out for the rest of the fight. This being the first scoring round, round four becomes really important because we're telling different stories. She's telling the one of escaping, posting, and landing these kicks. I'm telling the one of coming in, grabbing, and scoring on the inside. So because I took a little bit of a, yeah, now this is my story in round three, if I am less convincing in round four, that makes the way that she performed rounds one and two more important. Like it means that what she did in rounds one and two now prove what she's doing in round four. If I'm more convincing, what she was doing in round one and two actually works against her because now there's been a change of story. Now me chasing in rounds one and two was me overcoming the inability to grab her and score from the inside. This is why how you tell your story in round three is only half of the effect. You have to emphasize and like, like really reiterate what you just said in round four. Round four is really, really important. So we argued over what the story is in round three, and now round four is gonna be whose voice comes out more dominant. Uh, in telling that narrative for the fight. So it's really important as a fighter to, if you did well in round three, push it. If you did well in rounds one and two and three, you started to dip, you have to like re-up into the next level. So she's coming immediately with more kicks. She's staying a little bit closer. Threw an elbow at me immediately. It was actually a really nice one. She's doing that one, two open side kick that she landed in the last round. She just landed that open side kick but I'm staying close and I'm unperturbed by what she's doing to me. If I don't show effect by any of those things, it helps reiterate my story, which is I am fucking coming in and getting you. Jop lao, jop lao is what um, Krupa is screaming at me, which means just go and grab her. Jop lao, grab her already. <laughs> He's like, he wants me to like punch and teep on the way in in the earlier rounds, but now that it's like kill time, just go grab her and like break her down at close range. Her mouth is open. She's a little bit more off balance when I hit her now. Um, so her fatigue is showing a little bit. That fatigue comes from the way that I've been staying close to her. 
Oh, like a screwing uppercut from the backhand. I don't think I've ever thrown that in a fight and a right coming off of it. I'm landing powerful shots on her as I'm coming in. And that's a little bit from this gallop that I've been working on. You'll see me here. See that gallop? That's how I close distance faster. And my strikes actually come out of it much better instead of this kind of like, there's pulling her off of the ropes, but I kind of trip myself a little bit. There's the gallop and the punch comes out of it. Her kick actually should score higher, but she was off balance from my punch. And so it's not as effective. Here, I'm doing those knees to the side that he was complaining about. I just need to pull my hips back and go straight. But I'm basically drowning her. See how she's trying to stay away from me? And I don't even have to cut off the ring as much as I did in earlier rounds. I just need to stay on top of her because every time she's like pinging from corner to corner and I keep catching her. Big teep, big right hand. <laughs> That's my most dominant moment in the fight so far. And she's getting an eight count from a teep and a right cross, which are not my weapons in general, but they were beautiful right there. And then after the eight count, I came galloping out of the corner. I've, um, <laughs> for a very long time, when I would come out of the corner from an eight count, I did this really bad, like, power walk thing. I didn't intend to do it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like how it looks. And so I was just trying to kind of like put the pressure on my opponent and make sure that I was like coming out of the corner strong, like, like I got to get right on her and not like slowly come out. But it was this ridiculous like, like power walk across the ring. Um, this is why it's important to either have people watching you who will tell you what you look like or to have video of yourself so that you can catch these things. Because I saw it and I was like, I don't want to look like that coming out of a dominant moment like I get an eight count and then I'm coming out looking like a complete nerd so I worked on how to come out uh, of the corner for my eight counts and that gallop is something that I kind of um, have worked in that, that looks really good because it has that like urgency of closing in but it's more relaxed and Dang who's my corner up in Chiang Mai when I fight in Chiang Mai and who was my trainer for maybe the last year um, in Lana before I, I moved down to Pattaya he told me as a knee fighter, everyone's going to expect you to come in and grab them. So instead of grabbing them, because they're going to be preparing themselves for you to grab, teep. So when I was coming out of the corner just there galloping towards her, I was like in my head, I'm like, teep her uh, when you get to her. But these are things you have to think about. Like if you, if you look like a total goober coming out of the corner after a dominant moment, fix it. Like work on it. The time just didn't allow me to do anything cool. Oh, we didn't even get a hug. Usually you hug before round five. The ref was like, stay away from each other. So she's actually posted now. She's not even backing up as much. She's trying to stand her ground and just land her kicks as I come in. I'm keeping my leg up as I'm marching in because I'm anticipating that left knee as her step knee to stop me as I'm coming in. Something that Karunu has told me when I'm walking in, that's what I'm susceptible to. So I need to kind of cross block. And I was doing it there. Walking, walking, just landing that left. See how I'm galloping much more in this round? I don't even have to catch her anymore. I basically just have to stay this close. I've decided that I've done enough and she's just running away from me and so I'm gonna dance off. Krupat's like, that's enough, pola pola, means like enough already. And so it's basically like, now I just have to block. Um, I don't want to come forward because coming forward is, is acknowledging that I need to score, but I can stand my ground the way she was at the start of the round and as she comes towards me basically just block and snuff all of her uh, potentially scoring strikes, but the onus is on her now to come forward and, and try to take the fight. She just tapped my glove and so she's acknowledged that um, we're basically just <laughs> eating time for the rest of the round. She's not even trying that hard to come in and score. She's not giving up entirely, which I like. I like that she's still performing. Um, but if you're a Westerner new to Thailand and in round five someone gives you a, a glove tap, this is not a like, hey, this is fine. Like, uh, They're basically asking you to submit. And if you touch their glove, you're like, I secede. Uh, that's the end of this fight. So don't touch gloves unless you're willing to not uh, try to come in and smash someone anymore. I really liked her style. I really liked her attitude. Uh, she kicked really hard. But I was very, very proud of myself in this fight for just blocking like crazy and using that gallop to cover space in order to do what I talk about in terms of um, establishing the narrative and carrying it over. The referee told me to go out this way. I don't know why. I think that he basically was just like, she went out that way, you go out that way. I totally should have come back to my corner. But just 
through the luck of having gone the way that the referee told me to go, I had to walk around like the outside of the stadium on this far side. And because I had to go that way, I ran into a woman who had come all the way down from Kaulak, which is significant distance if you're not driving yourself, um, in order to come watch me fight. And because I saw her, I was able to go say hi to her. And we, we had this like kind of awesome connection talking to each other in the stands. She uh, follows me um, and had contacted me on Instagram before saying she was going to come watch. But I totally would not have run into her um, if I had gone out the way that I'm supposed to have gone out is like just a lucky thing. <laughs> this is the backstage of Patong Stadium. You can see the next fight is totally just getting ready to go in. I have my mouthpiece in it, so I look a little goofy, okay, but I think, that, I think the crew pot is like telling me that I didn't do the things that he was telling me to do uh, in terms of bringing my hips back in order to land that uh, see up knee and score higher. Kevin's hat. Outside of Batong Stadium in uh, Phuket, and I just fought fight 263. That's me and my opponent on the poster right there. And it's leap year, which I didn't even think about until just now, which is kind of cool. Um, so I won on points, which I'm excited about. Um, I definitely was doing things in this fight that are things I've been working on and things that I'm excited about because they're not things I normally do. My like most dominant moment in the whole fight was a teeth, which is unusual for me. My clinch kind of sucked, which is interesting, but it's also one of these things that like, the thing that you're working on the most will not appear in your fight. It's this total, I'm talking about me, I'm saying you, but I'm talking about me. If I overfocus on something, <clears throat> sounds like a knockout. If I overfocus on something or think too much about like, I want to do this, there's no way it'll come into the fight. So I actually did exactly what I've been working against for the past couple of weeks. Which is funny, but that just means I get to keep working on it. So, uh, fight 263 in the books, win on points. Thank you to Pet Champu, my opponent, uh, who is really good, very good kicker. I was very proud of all of my blocks. Thank you guys, everyone who watched it live. Um, and thank you to Crew Pot for cornering for me and to fans who came and watched me live. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys at the next one. So we're in uh, Patong, um, Phuket, Thailand. This is Sylvie's fight, 263rd fight. She's in the blue corner, if you can't tell. Uh, sinking audio, one, two, three, go. Um, we don't know much about um, Sylvie's opponent at all. Um, she looks like she's like, I don't know, 50, 51 kilos. Um, Sylvie's about 46 kilos. Um, this is our second fight uh, ever at Patong Stadium. Sylvie fought here less than a month ago and was victorious. Um, the only thing we have heard about our opponent, someone on Instagram when we posted the poster, uh, said that she's a very strong kicker, a hard kicker. Um, so if that's the case, it's basically going to be an outside versus inside kind of fight. Uh, if Sylvie can get the fight in her fight space as kind of usual, it's going to uh, bode well. Phuket doesn't have like a super, um, for our, our mobile plan, 
Phuket doesn't have like a super um, fast internet, so we're not sure how, how good the Facebook stream is gonna be in terms of video quality. So be smiling. I was pretty far from the ring last time, um, and the GoPro just like shrunk everything. So I tried to get a little closer to the ring. I'm actually ringside right now. Uh, Sylvie's been working great in the gym. She's been working on all kinds of like medium and short range of techniques and strategies. Oh, looking closer at her opponent, looks like she's pretty heavy thighed. So uh, in that she might have weight on Sylvie or does have weight on Sylvie, it's in the thighs. So Sylvie tends to do pretty well against these kinds of opponents, which are uh, in stature about her size, but they got the weight down below. Um, Um, because it's kind of favorable for clinch. Um, the, one of the harder fight combinations Sylvie faces is when somebody doesn't want to clinch. So when somebody has weight on you, they tend to be like um, very confident that they can. Oh, she's got a beautiful Wamoy. I've never even seen this move before. It's fucking beautiful. Um, when they got weight on you, they have, they're much more willing to engage uh, in the space that Sylvie excels in. That's Crew Pot uh, in Sylvie's corner. She's a, he's our corner down here in Phuket. He um, runs the Phuket King uh, Gym in Patong. Uh, he's Muay Cal master. It's pretty awesome having him, her, him in her corner because he totally understands her style. Uh, if you're more interested in him, uh, there is a, a, Muay, a Muay Thai library session up in, on a patron, an hour of him training Sylvie. All right, Sylvie going left as she likes to do, leveling out. Girl's got a, a leg bounce and a firm teeth and long guard, basically uh, keeping Sylvie out. Sylvie had a nice check on that counter kick. Sylvie inching forward. Sylvie's defense is pretty good. She's bouncing that lead leg. Girl is staying away from Sylvie. Sylvie doing some nice checks. The long guard is going to see right, interesting right, against right, Sylvie. Right. Uh, Krupat's calling for jabs. Yep, Sylvie coming freezing on. a little yep, bit. Coming on. Yep, coming on. The long guard is kind of getting into Sylvie's head and causing her to pause. Sylvie low kicks. So the question is, will Sylvie be able to to catch and punish, uh, get inside that long guard? It's long guard's basically just her arms are outstretched. Sylvie's not, uh, not um, cutting off the ring. There she goes. She cuts off the ring a little bit. This girl's got some nice movement. Here's the first clinch. On a cock kick. Sylvie's uh, not cutting off the ring. Yep, I got, yep, I do it, yep, I do it. First clinch and the ref breaks it. Gallop, Sylvie, gallop. Sylvie's got to gallop and not walk forward. There it is, the gallop. She catches her right away. There's that little hop, that little gallop. Sylvie's got to gallop. Still playing Red's game a little bit. So you just you're walking in a circle. You, you have. Sylvie 
Sylvie. You have to gallop. Sylvie, you're walking right. You have to gallop left. So I'm basically telling Sylvie she's got to cut off the ring to the left, which is one of our like uh, touchstones. And this gallop that I'm referring to is, um, it's a footwork mo forward movement that is taken from Yodkun Pan. Um, Diesel Noy also had a gallop a little bit, but um, it's arrhythmic and it's hard for the opponent to read. If you just uh, walk forward or um, inch forward, Thai girls are really good at backing up. Sylvie, Sylvie. Sylvie, you have to clinch. Sylvie has to press on the space a little bit and not point fight um, so that it tells a story later in the fight. Nice uh, lead hook for Sylvie. Sylvie's starting to close the space in. Nice checks from Sylvie. There's the grab. Uh, come on, Sylvie. Teeping a little bit, that's pretty good. Hook. Boy, nice knee on the break a little bit. Sylvie uh, spearing the jab, missing though. She's crowding her very nicely. She has to pull her off the ropes. There she is cutting off left, which is really good. Girl's pretty tough, hanging in there. Nice check from Sylvie. Boy. Sylvie, nice strong jab and cross. Cross to the body. Boy. It's getting a lot of outside position. There's a little bit of the gallop and a landed uh, punt, uh, kick. So he's got to pull her off the ropes. Nice. Nice body shot by Sylvie. Boy. Yep. Sylvie, you gotta pull her off the rope. Stay out of the corner. Second round, seven. Sylvie. You have to pull her off the rope. You're you're getting outside position. Pull her, Sylvie, off the rope every time. So our keys to fighting, um, to remind everybody, if you watch, if you watch Sylvie regularly, you'll hear me talk about this. Go left, uh, which fundamentally comes off, cuts off the ring against Sylvie's instinct. When you clinch, pull off the ropes to keep the ref from breaking it.
Sylvain. Sylvain. Get your right hand in, baby. Right hand in. Sylvie's had her right hand on the outside uh, a bunch, which is uh, in a weaker position. She's advancing on space. Her right hand is outside again. Oh, the nice double knee in the corner. Still not pulling her off the ropes. There's the little gallop. Nice check on entry. She has to pull her off the ropes here. Pull her off the ropes, Sylvie. Sorry for yelling if you guys are there. She's marching pretty hard. Oh, here she goes. Arm, got the arm loop. Off the ropes, Sylvie. You see? Her opponent's slowing a little bit. Oh, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Stay tight, stay tight. Somebody's got to gallop to catch her. All the clinches on the ropes, which is a disadvantage for Sylvie. A uh, nice little hand trap into cross. She's got to pull her off the ropes. As you can see, the ref will break the clinch immediately on the ropes. Red is just running now. Sylvie's tagging her. Boy. Trying to control that right arm elbow. Oh. It looked like that elbow landed. Sylvie's pressuring, her elbow came back from red. Sylvie hooking and crossing. Sylvie, off the rope. Sylvie, off the rope. If you pull her off the rope, you blow it open. Sorry. Uh, I, I know it looks like it's not a fight to some, but a retreating TIE fighter is dangerous in that they can they can flip the story in TIE scoring pretty easily if they make you look like you are chasing. So as the chasing fighter, a retreating fighter is always something that has to be um, strategized against. Basically you have to catch them and continue. Nice red lands a nice knee. I mean, nice kick. Elbow from red. Red is throwing lots of elbows. That's pissing Sylvie off a little bit. Elbow. Sylvie just marching after her. Sylvie got outside position. More elbows probably coming from red. Sylvie jabbing and crossing. It, low kick from Sylvie. Nice cross, uh, cross check from Sylvie. Nice knee. If she drags her off the rope, she wins this fight. She just can't do it. She's a little bit on the getting outside position on all these clinch moves. Oh, ref saving the fighter a little bit. No, 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 no. 
Oh, uppercut, corkscrew uppercut. Sylvie checks the kick. Nice punch crossed by Sylvie. Now she's got the arm in. Oi. Cross lands from Sylvie. There's off the ropes. The first pull off the ropes from Sylvie. Nice cross from Sylvie. Sylvie's landing at will now. Pot's calling for body punch. Now she has position. Oh, oh nice tape. Oh, Pot called for a tape. He's got a count on this. Tape and a hard jab from Sylvie. That's pretty big. So Sylvie's got a sizable lead at this point. That teep and hard left jab, which produced a count, uh, could have put the fight out of reach. Um, strategically, there's been a big mistake in not pulling uh, her opponent off the ropes. It, it would have been a blowout of larger, of a greater proportion. If Red cuts Sylvie, it can be fight on again. Red's throwing a lot of elbows. There's a great moment where Krupak called for a teep and Sylvie teep like two seconds later. It, it's one of the hidden uh, weapons of a Dern fighter is that when you're chasing somebody, the teep is always open. And the teep actually changes what, visual, what it looks like visually. Um, when, you, when you're chasing somebody and you're teeping them and they back up, it looks like you're moving them rather than drawing you forward. Sylvie should have this, but you never know. Nice, beginning with the teeth, very nice. Nice check, although she fell off the check. Nice, Sylvie's galloping and checking nicely. Here she goes. She's in the middle of the ring for the first time. Another T, beautiful. This is beautiful fifth round action. A little bit off balance on those checks. She's spearing that jab, something she's been working on. Jab and T. Another T at the ropes, very nice. Very nice. And now Krupat is calling for Femur, Femur, from Femur. Red would have to do a lot to win this fight. Okay. Sylvie's got a nice firm teep that she's learned from Krunu. Change positions, a little bit of flair. Teep. Red's trying to do a, a kind of combination of some kind. Was not successful. Sylvie dancing off the fight, touch gloves. Red doing a little bit of styling. She might try something big. But Sylvie running off the thing, and Red lets her do it. So it's a polite ending to the fight. Sylvie bouncing that leg. Nice, a little bit of style. And that was nice. That was a pretty good salt of the uh, retreating fighter. Not always easy to do. Things to work on are the drag backs off the ropes. Sylvie leaving the other way. I don't know where she's going on the way there. 
Maybe that's how they exit. Thank you. Nicely done, baby.